Hello, beloved. This devotion is for Friday of the first week of Advent, December 4th, 2020. We begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 80, beginning at verse 1. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 332 from Lutheran Service Book, Savior of the Nations Come. Today we sing stanzas 5 through 8. God the Father was his source, back to God he ran his course, into hell his road went down, back then to his thorn and crown. For you are the Father's Son, who in flesh the victory won, by your mighty power make whole all our hills of flesh and soul. From the manger newborn light shines in glory through the night, Darkness there no more resides, in this light faith now abides. Glory to the Father, sing, glory to the Son, our King, glory to the Spirit be, now and through eternity. Today's reading is from the prophet Isaiah, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 12. When the Lord has finished all his work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, he will punish the speech of the arrogant heart of the king of Syria and the boastful look in his eyes. For he says, by the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I have understanding. I remove the boundaries of peoples and plunder their treasures. Like a bull I bring down those who sit on thrones. My hand has found like a nest the wealth of the peoples. And as one gathers eggs that have been forsaken, so I have gathered all the earth. And there was none that moved a wing or opened the mouth or chirped. Shall the axe boast over him who hews with it? Or the saw magnify itself against him who wields it? As if a rod should wield him who lifts it, or as if a staff should lift him who is not wood. Therefore the Lord God of hosts will send wasting sickness among his stout warriors, and under his glory a burning will be kindled like the burning of fire. The light of Israel will become a fire, and his Holy One a flame, and it will burn and devour his thorns and briars in one day. The glory of his forest and of his fruitful land the Lord will destroy, both soul and body, and it will be as when a sick man wastes away. 
the remnant of the trees of his forest will be so few that a child can write them down. In that day, the remnant of Israel and the survivors of the house of Jacob will no more lean on him who struck them, but will lean on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. A remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. For though your people Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. Destruction is decreed, overflowing with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts will make a full end, as decreed, in the midst of all the earth. Therefore thus says the Lord God of hosts, O my people who dwell in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians when they strike with the rod and lift up their staff against you as the Egyptians did. For in a very little while my fury will come to an end, and my anger will be directed to their destruction. And the Lord of hosts will wield against them a whip as when he struck Midian at the rock of Oreb, and his staff will be over the sea, and he will lift it as he did in Egypt. And in that day his burden will depart from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people, in the forgiveness of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, when the day shall dawn upon us from on high, to give light to them who sit in darkness into the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we remember and give thanks to God for St. John of Damascus, theologian and hymn writer. We read from Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. John was born around AD 675 
and raised in Damascus. His considerable gifts landed him a position as an administrator in the Muslim caliphate in that city. Yet his love for his Lord and his devotion to the church led him to forsake this position of worldly wealth and influence, enter a monastery around A.D. 716, and finally to be ordained a presbyter. As a custodian of the apostolic doctrine, he forcefully resisted when the Byzantine emperor Leo the Isaurian tried to outlaw the use of images in the church. John constantly taught that once the eternal word had become flesh, that flesh could be depicted and the depiction could be honored. And similarly, the flesh of Christ's saints could be depicted and grace the walls of the churches and the homes of Christians. The church's use of iconography was simply a consequence of the incarnation itself. Luther would later express quite similar teachings against the radical reformers who sought to remove art from the churches. As a theologian, John is often regarded as the last of the great church fathers of the antiquity. His work on the Orthodox faith summarized the dogmatic tradition that he had received, and it is cited more than once by Martin Chemnitz in his great work on Christology. In his book on the faith, John freely confesses, It is impossible either to say or fully to understand anything about God beyond what has been divinely proclaimed to us, whether told or revealed, by the sacred declarations of the Old and New Testaments. Similarly, his Fount of Wisdom was a massive compendium of the works of previous theologians. Melanchthon and other Lutheran theologians used its structure and form as a guideline in the construction of their Lotzi Communis. As a hymn writer, John perfected the form of song in the East known as the canon. John's compositions remain beloved in both East and West. Lutherans in English-speaking lands are particularly familiar with some of his Easter hymnody, Come Youth Faithful, Raise the Strain, and The Day of Resurrection. Perhaps his most hauntingly beautiful piece is this reflection on the contrast between the passing joys of earth and the lasting blessedness of the beatific vision. What earthly joy remains untouched by grief? What glory stands forever on the earth? Frail shadows all, delusive dreams which death will one day sweep away. But in the light of your countenance, O Christ, and in the enjoyment of your beauty, give rest to those whom you have chosen and taken, for you are the lover of mankind. He could well have had such words on his lips when he died in 749, a teacher of the church revered and loved. We pray. O Lord, through your servant John of Damascus, you proclaimed with power the mysteries of the true faith. Confirm our faith so that we may confess Jesus to be true God and true man, singing the praises of the risen Lord and so that by the power of the resurrection we may also attain to the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.